Hey guys, how's it going? Lagbro here. Welcome to my League Start Guide for a Shadow going into Assassin or Trickster. This guide is made before the patch notes of 3.12 Heist League and unless there's any big changes coming to Spellslinger, this is what I'm going to be using for my League Start. Check the comments for updates after the patch notes are live. In the background and in the showcase, you can see the build when it first hits Chamber of Innocence at level 39, the first Blood Aqueduct at level 57 and also the first map at level 62. This is without any gear changes after Kitava Act 10. And as you can see, we have a lot of unallocated skill points. This is to show you that after the skill tree I've shown you, you can go and build the skill tree that you're going to be using with like the other build you're going for. Like I'm going for uh, Penance Brand. So I'll be start picking up Spell Crit, Energy Shield and Outer Jewel Sockets for large and medium cluster jewels. But those won't benefit this build. Before we go into the guide, I want to urge you to pick up quite a bit of rares in the beginning and also all currency above portal scrolls because this will require quite a few alterations and a few chance orbs in the leveling process. Secondly, a good item filter can greatly help you by highlighting items with the correct item links and adding drop sounds for rings and belts. I would also recommend you run blood aqueducts for two or three levels on league start. This is because the XP here is very good up to until um, level 65 actually. But I would run it to like 61, 62 maybe. There's also a chance of getting the Humility card, which 9 of them trades in for a Tabula, and those are worth a shit ton in the beginning. Okay, so let's start with the guide. First off, after you kill Hillock, you buy Caustic Arrow from Nessa, pick up Explosive Craft from Tarly, buy a Bow, and look for Green 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 Link, Blue Blue Green Link, and Movement Speed Boots. You want to link the Explosive Trap with Lesser Poison, and link your Caustic Arrow with at least a Green Green Link. While in Act 1, keep an eye out for Green 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 Link, Blue Blue Blue, Blue Blue Green, and some extra Green and Blue Sockets. Up until level 12, you will need one Green 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 for Toxic Rain, one Green Green for Caustic Arrow, one Blue for Frost Blink and later Flame Dash, two Greens for Puncture and Smoke Mine. And if Tarly is being an asshole to you in the beginning, don't sweat it. As you can see in the video, I didn't get a bow. That doesn't really matter, go for Explosive Trap and you can just do that. Also, you kill Hellrake and hopefully he has a bow for you after that. After you kill Hellrake, pick up the Quicksilver and grab one of the blue gems Nessa offers you. The reason we want to pick up a blue gem here is you can sell an Iron Ring and a blue gem to get a Sapphire Ring with Cold Resistance. That's very useful for Mervale and also using Onslaught together with Caustic Arrow doesn't really work that well because if you kill stuff with the damage over time from Caustic Arrow, you won't proc Onslaught. You're only going to proc Onslaught if you kill it with hit damage from Caustic Arrow, and that damage is a small part of the damage from Caustic. Here, you also want to buy Mirage Archer and link that with your Caustic Arrow. Mirage Archer is only going to shoot twice at this early levels with your low attack speed, but if you're smart with your first shot and shoot enemies far away from you, Mirage Archer can pick up one or two packs close to you because she targets the closest enemies. Buy a Puncture and equip it. This is for some extra single target damage, buy Arcane Surge and Serrated Arrow Quiver if you can afford it. We won't use Arcane Surge until later, but we want it at a low level, so if you don't pick up it now, you're gonna have to wait until Act 6 until it's very useful for you. Pick up Frost Blink and Contagion from Tarly and check for links and movement speed boots again. If you go back to town when you go to Lower Prison, you can pick up Void Manipulation and link that with your Caustic as well if you have a 3 link. When you're killing Brutus, you want to hit him once with Puncture. Puncture has a duration of 8 seconds and it will take damage over time for 8 seconds. Then you want to hit him with Caustic Arrow and keep Caustic Arrow up on him at all times. Caustic Arrow has a duration of 2 seconds, but your Mirage Archer will keep that up for a bit longer. And then you spam Explosive Traps on him until he's dead. After Brutus is dead, you get Smoke Mine and you buy Flame Dash. Movement will now be a lot smoother than before. You throw the smoke mine, detonate it, and immediately flame dash after it for a huge teleport and then a speed bonus from smoke mine. Get to level 12 before you go to Mervel. Link Toxic Rain with Mirage Archer and Void Manipulation. Remember to remove the Mirage Archer from Caustic Arrow. And if you have the links for it, still have your Caustic Arrow linked with Void Manipulation. If you can afford it, buy a Sapphire Ring or two. And lastly, if you have the sockets for it, equip your Essence Drain. This will, all this will make your fight with Merlil a lot easier. And remember that you can craft Sapphire Rings by selling an Iron Ring with a blue gem to the vendor. In Act 2, do the Den for the extra Quicksilver. Unless you already have two Quicksilvers, then you can skip it. But you can also get a rare belt from this. The quest is called the Great White Beast. After Chamber of Sins, you pick up Skitterbots, but you skip the Herald of Agony. A lot of people go for Herald of Agony here, 
but with the very low chance of poisoning we have, I don't think it's worth it and we will rarely spawn the little spider dude. So after you kill the weaver, pick up faster attacks and save this for a frenzy setup later. You can also pick up frenzy and two control destructions here, but we're not going to use that until we swap to Spellslinger at level 28. So don't worry if you don't have the alterations right now. Also make sure to pick up chance orbs to buy efficacy for your links later. In caverns, just before you go into the ancient pyramid, you can pick up the movement speed craft so you won't have to look for movement speed boots anymore. Yay! Uh, the recipe though costs three orbs of augmentation, so I hope you have them by now. In Act 3, start looking for four links. Here we want three blue and one green for Solen and four blues for Essence Drain. Those are the main four links we want. So eventually in Act 3 you're gonna hit level 28 and we're finally gonna start using our Spell Slinger setup. So now we're gonna swap over from your bow into a dual wand if you're playing softcore, maybe a wand and a shield if you're playing hardcore. If you remember to pick up the spell damage craft from the Vol Over Soul area, go craft that on your wands. But these crafts are four alterations each, so if you don't have that to spare, it's fine. So the links we're going to use now is Spell Slinger, together with Soul Rend, Control Destruction, and Void Manipulation, depending on what colors you have. If you have four link, you can go for all four. If you only have a three link, you can skip Control Destruction or Void Manipulation, either of the colors that you're missing. Your next Spell Slinger setup is going to be Spell Slinger with Essence Drain, Control Destruction, Void Manipulation, and you're also going to add Efficacy on this when you get to Act 6. And your third Spell Slinger setup is going to be Spell Slinger, Contagion, and nothing else because each time you add a support gem it increases the mana reservation of the spell stringer so we can't reserve too much and contagion doesn't really do that much damage we just want it to spread our essence drain lastly you want to buy a bane and link it with despair and if you have a three link control destruction or void manipulation and if you have a four link both of them now we're also going to start using Frenzy to trigger our Spell Slingers. And if you have the links for it, you can link it with faster attacks. But that's not to proc it more often. It's just to get a smoother attack animation while we're moving. To be able to reserve mana for these three Spell Slingers, you're going to have to drop Skitter Bots. Other than that, we're going to link Arcane Surge with our Flame Dash. Try to have Arcane Surge as low level as possible so it triggers every time you Flame Dash. And you also want to be using Smoke Mine. Okay, so I'm quickly going to go over where you can find these skill gems. So in Act 1, you can buy Essence Drain, Contagion, Arcane Surge, Flame Dash, Smoke Mine, and Void Manipulation. In Act 2, you buy Control Destruction, Frenzy, and if you want, Faster Attacks. In Act 3, you buy Spell Slinger, Soul Rend, Despair, and Bane. And remember, while you're using Spell Slinger, you're not going to need any cast speed. That's not going to affect you in any way. So we're just going to rock this setup until we hit level 38 and we've cleared Act 4. After you hit 38 and clear Act 4, you pick up greater multiple projectiles and you link that with your Soul Rend. So the next changes for us comes in Act 6 after we clear Nessa's quest in Twilight Strand. Now you're going to get Spell Totem, link it with Wither and multiple Totem support if you have a 3 link. That's 1 blue and 2 reds. Use this on bosses and the Totems will quickly apply 15 stacks of Wither on the boss, making them take 90% increased Chaos damage, so it almost doubles your damage on bosses. If you have some spare chance orbs, you can swap out Void Manipulation for Efficacy instead. Efficacy gives you a bit more damage and is also gives you increased duration. That is great for all your damage over time skills. I would prior prioritize Essence Drain and Soul Rend with these upgrades. Okay, so that's all our links done until you get a 5 or a 6 link. But this is just a leveling guide and not a build guide, so I'm not going to go into what you're going to do for a 5 or a 6 link. Okay, so over to the skill tree and just so I don't forget it, kill all the bandits. Okay, so lastly, I want to show you the skill tree I'm using. So we start off taking the chaos damage and physical damage. This is great both for our damage over time and also our explosive trap. Then we go into entropy for some damage over time. Up here, more damage. We're basically picking up only damage at the beginning. Lethal assault, we're skipping this for now. That's just life. Uh, cold harder calculation into growth and decay. After you pick up Growth and Decay, there's two options for you. Either you go for No Witnesses, which will give you a 10% chance to gain Elusive on Kill. Elusive gives you quite a bit of movement speed. Or you could go for Entropy. I went for No Witnesses, that's only 4 points. And then I went for Entropy, I picked up Written in Blood first. And I go for these damage nodes, it's both Chaos Damage and Chaos Damage Multiplier. That is great. After that, I went for this. It's also a Chaos Damage and Chaos Damage Multiplier. When you're at this point, you can start building into your later game tree. So unless you're 
like gonna play this build for later as well you can start picking up nodes like start going over here maybe if you want spell crit you go down you grab that you grab doomcast over here you start going over grabbing that maybe you start picking up some more life maybe some power charges if you're going assassin which i am we're gonna pick up that and like that so just start filling in your end game tree but this is this is basically the leveling tree or leveling point tree that i'm gonna use and this is what i have based but wait so this is what i have when i'm doing maps um as you could see in the beginning of the video so for ascendancy if you're a let's start with a trickster if you're a trickster you want to go patient reaper first it's increased damage over time super good and it's also recovery of life energy shield and mana on kill and then you're going to go into prolonged pain and whatever else you want to do you want to go escape archers probably if you're an assassin the only note that gives you like sure you can get elusive here but we're not critting so it's very hard to get it um, so the only node that's really good for you as an assassin is the opportunistic. That's 20% increased movement build speed if you killed recently, and recently is 4 seconds, so it's quite a lot of movement speed at all times. And it's also 25% more damage while there's at most one rare or en unique enemy nearby. So this will increase your single target damage quite a bit. And then after your first lab, you're just going to start picking up probably getting some power charges, maybe getting the elusive or... Uh, getting some more crit multi so that's what i'm gonna do for the skill tree and this is how how i'm gonna start it i really hope you enjoyed this guide and there's more coming on the channel so like the video subscribe so you don't miss that and until next time stay safe and have fun exile